Hey, hey, everyone. It is JNA with the Let's Get Loud podcast. Hello. Hello. It's like I do this as if they need to hear. Do you hear me louder? Do you hear me more? We hear you. We hear you. We see you. I'm assuming most people are listening to this podcast on Spotify or Apple. Oh, and yeah. YouTube. You have the typical people. Well, those are the only ones. But um, I feel like um, there's it's always the same people on YouTube. I yeah. Like two people are YouTube people. Spotify people are Spotify people. Yeah, absolutely. You know it. Do you listen to your podcast on Spotify or Apple? I, it would be Spotify. That's why I would like search for it. Okay. For you is Apple. Okay. I'm always on Apple. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Um, how's Neil? He's on the couch. He's still home. Still struggling with that cold, huh? Yeah. I told him not to go to work. Like he's coughing. And like I said, it's not... 2005 where you got a certificate for going to work sick like people don't want your germs like they do right. you know what I mean like, it right. used to be like suck it up but now it's like stay home <laughs> nah I agree no no yeah and he also, works in a building he probably interacts with a hundred people a day yeah yeah and no one uh likes to be sick these days uh or ever but it's like these days it's like stay away like I don't you know what I mean it's like we understand more how people get sick I like, felt something in my throat and I was like absolutely not yeah. Um, I had that like last, like two, three weeks ago. And I was like, the it's hard, there's like something happening. And I'm like, no, no, no. And you know, that whole conversation with strep and anyways, and Dia was sick again. And I'm like, oh, but it was, it wasn't like an intense. It like lasted a week, whatever. Some, some, mostly two time nasal always, there's always nibushi. You have the one thing. Is there anything more satisfying? Then when you can't really blow your nose because it's so full, but you can put the thing in. Nothing. And then you can finally breathe out of, out of one nostril. Yes. And then you just sleep like a baby with that one oh. thing in your head. There's yeah. something about it. I'm like, you would think it would be so uncomfortable or so weird. Not. So no. it's actually satisfying. Absolutely. Sometimes my kids wake me up in the night to make them a nose torpedo. Oh, I, I love it. Oh. Yeah, sure, kids. Let's do that. Let's mm. do that. At 3 a.m., make your own no nose <laughs> torpedo. <laughs> oh my goodness, those kids, huh? Um, wait, you said something and it triggered a thought. Even just like, okay, yeah, you said there's no 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 certificate coming in the mail. I just find that like these days, like even more than ever, people are recognizing that there is no certificate coming in the mail for anything. Um, and that that's why a good relationship with yourself and you being your own cheerleader is the the route to, to true happiness or to satisfaction because you need to do shit for you because no one's coming to say good job everyone's doing their own thing so if you can be the person being like good job like and really do things for you that's when you have more of a satisfied life I would say I really think that when you what you do is reinforcing to you that's your certificate yeah, that's authenticity. Yeah, exactly. Right? And so when you're doing something that feels so hard, that's when you really want that certificate, right? Like when you're losing weight in a way that's like so difficult, you're waiting for your medal. What? Yes. And uh, I mean, okay, let's have a conversation today about like gain, regaining weight or when people are like, they lose weight and then people in their lives are like, yeah, well, we'll see if you keep it off. And then that actually like, they're like, and then my friend said that. And then I... I just like thought oh, she's right. I'm just going to like, sometimes I'm like, Bello. like, don't you have like, not a backbone, but don't you have your back, your yeah. own back? Like for me, I'm like, did you lose your weight for your friend or for you? Like, fuck the friend that says, we'll see if you keep it off. She's like, yeah, we'll see, I guess. huh? Like, isn't this about you? I guess I just want to share this. So there's one thing that Jeff does that he wants a medal every time. And I never give it to him because I don't even notice because it's not my thing is washing my car. Like he really, like I should bow down to the king. Like I just washed your car for an hour. I'm like, you did that for you because I could not, you know me, Alicia, could not care less. I would just drive it much, like there's basically can barely see because it's so dirty. You know what I mean? Care pas though, care pas. Yeah. And he, he just like, doesn't understand that. And then he washes it. So he washed my car. He washed both of our cars. And the next morning I drive to spin and I get back and it's dirty. And he's like, you couldn't make an effort to avoid the puddles. And I'm like, I didn't think about it because I don't care. Yeah. 
And like, he's like, look at my car. I just drove to Moncton and it's like right still clean. And mine is like right dirty again. Yeah. But I don't drive I things. To see you. <laughs> yeah. Like I don't care. Like I, and, and it's not like, and I'm like, Jeff, I didn't do it out of like disrespect to you. I didn't think about it. And I'm like, if it's so important to you, you should have told me before I left. Remember I washed your car and it's like, oh, right. That reminder. Okay. Right, right, right. Okay. And then I would have like made an effort for two seconds until I forget again. But like, it's like, that's where I'm like, are you doing it for me or you look? Because clearly, you know, that's, I, I, I did also didn't even ask you to do this. I really wish that Neil realized that he, that's actually his job cleaning cars. Like I I, it. no one cleans our cars. No one. And I, I really feel like I'm at capacity and I'm in charge of enough things. Yeah. Um, but it's like, he doesn't realize that maybe that's a thing that people have cleaned their cars. Yeah. I don't think, yeah. I think maybe he doesn't even know that's a thing. Like, I don't think he's like, it's a thing and I don't want to do it. I think yeah. he's just like, Oh yeah. Should be cleaned or is this a part of your list? Maybe he thinks it's a part of your list. And then he gets mad at me if I leave like a bottle in the car or something. Oh, and okay. I'm like, Oh, sorry. No, you're like, you're absolutely not. Do you know what he does sometimes if he gets in like a car that I've been in and there's like, and I'm not disgusting. Like there's not like piles of stuff. Is there garbage? Sometimes. Yes. Yes. He, he collects it and puts it on the driveway and then like reverses out and leaves the like collection of garbage on the driveway. Dramatic. It's very dramatic. So dramatic. And also makes me want to murder him mm. because it's kind of like, look what you did. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Going well over here. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> You're like, oh, glad I brought that up. Anyway, so that's so I, as much as Jeff, I would love for Jeff to come and clean my cars. He would be just okay. actually when Jeff is ever on, I'm like, don't look at my car. Don't go in my car. And I, his perspective of things sometimes, I'm like, you don't. He's like, oh my God, your car. And I'm like, Jeff, like yeah. you have not gone in other people's cars. Oh. Like it, my car is very good. Like you don't, stop. Like if my car is bad, but still good. Do you know what I mean? Like, also shut the fuck up like I go in your car and I don't think anything I just push aside some yeah. things just yeah. like I'm I push aside for me like I don't like you know what I mean oh my goodness I, I just think oh not a priority and also and also I'm the one that drives the kids like my car has the yeah. shit in it because I have the shit in my car thank you yes not you and your suit yeah your fucking uh computer yes you know what I mean? Like, yeah, the mittens are on the floor because I drive the people with the mittens. Yeah. You don't have mittens on your floor of the car nope. because you don't, you don't drive these people. Nope. And I mean, also kids are really bad. I, I don't know if your kids do that, but like Dia leaves everything. Like she like is, she has all her, her stuff for school and I just leaves it there. Like she like comes into the, the, the house whatever. And I'm like, where's your stuff? And I, she's like, oh, left it in the car. And I'm like, go get it. I'll ban and leaves everything in the car all the time. So I'm like, turn around, go get your stuff in the car. And she's not like a lazy kid, but when it comes to that, oh, bah. and I, I I would do the same. That's Jose, that's me. Yeah. Like between well, Jeff and I, bus. obviously it's me, no? They go, they go off the bus, so they need their shit with them. Right, okay. See me, it's the car. So she likes to leave it in the car. Mm -hmm. Or let's say she like has a snack, the wrapper for sure. Oh. Hundred. Okay, the wrapper stays. I'm like, bring the wrapper. Absolutely. Okay. Like, kids are bad for that around the house too. Okay. Yeah. Just, yeah. It's just like this. Like, there's at least seventeen elastics on my floor right now. Like so. the floor is just uh, the garbage. Like you know. Oh. Yeah. Like I've just I've literally seen the girls take an elastic out and they just go like that. And I'm like. Oh man. Okay. So I think it's all children actually. I think yeah, it's I mean, and I blame myself. Like I'm bad. I don't like make them clean it up all the time. Yeah. Like, yeah. And even if you make them, then yeah, it's like the next day they'll do it again. So like, oh right, yesterday. You know what I mean? Also, if you made them clean up every single little mess that they made, they would just be spending all day cleaning up all their little messes. I agree. Let them be kids. Mm. It's a little bit a part of our responsibility, I guess, for having them oh. pick up their shit. Pick up their shit. Pick up their shit. Um, okay, wow. Okay, so let's talk about, because Alicia and I were having a conversation about regaining weight. And uh, we thought, you know, a lot of our listeners, I'm sure, I'm sure have either 
lost weight and regained it. Maybe you're there and you're like, yes, this is a great conversation. Let's talk about regain. Or you're losing your weight and you're afraid of regain. That's also like, a, it's like not a mindset blocker, but almost like a limiting. Uh, There's something about that, that people that actually image. connect to it, but people do say that to me. Yeah, no, I, I don't connect to it either. Cause I'm like, first of all, why are you worried about something you're in full control of? Uh, of? And like, second of all, let's just worry about the things that are actually happening right now instead of the things that might happen. Why is it that so many people worry about things that have not happened yet? I'm like, that has not happened. So let's not worry about something. Yeah. I, I like, am so the polar opposite of that. Like, mm -hmm. I really don't try to worry about things that haven't happened yet. Um, you think it's a skill that we've developed or we're born this way? Baby, are you born this way? I think part of it for me, if I'm going to be super honest, because I think left to my own devices, I would obsessively worry about things. Um, I think it's just, I'm so busy. Okay. Like, I think my brain is just so full and so busy. It doesn't have time to like worry. And I think if I wasn't, I would be. Yeah. You'd be like your mom. Uh-huh. Yeah. No, yeah. I see what you're saying. You're right. Yeah. I like, I really, I relate to what you're saying as in like, there's no time. Like we there's have no to time to today. worry about things that haven't happened. Cause I just have to worry about the things that are currently happening. Yeah. I have a list waiting for me to worry. Like, for me to have, ha have had more kids after Alfie, Alfie was like the best thing because I like had time to like obsess over him and mm. his development and, and everything. Like, it's like, yeah. I needed more kids. I see that for you actually. Yeah. 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 I see what you're saying. Still just a distraction. I drove him from tutoring. I drove him to tutoring yesterday. We held hands the whole way. Oh, can he sit in front now? Yeah. Uh, I mean, he's not supposed to. He's supposed still? to be 12, I think. I think there's like a, a few things like a, like weight is also important, but like, is it age and weight? I, I mean, some of Dia's friends sit in front and they're nine. So usually, usually that that's like one of those rules that like slowly we broke and then I like forgot that I was breaking a rule. Oh, okay. Do you know what I mean? Like it, it was like that with their booster seats. It was like, okay, if we're just going like, it's fine. You don't need it right now. Cause we're just going into yeah. Riverview. You know what I mean? And then it was like, no, you need it. And then it was like, wait, do we, are we supposed to have booster seats? Like I forgot. Yeah, and do we like go to jail? <laughs> like, is it really like, is it against the law? Maybe like, like, that's fine. Yeah. I think, yeah, it is. Definitely. Yeah, it would be right. So I'm like, the other day, oh my God, Dio, so we're driving to Moncton and the car beside us is this tiny child in the back seat, no car seat, no seatbelt. Yeah. Just rattling yeah. around. Yeah. Just like, kind of like, he's like sitting at the edge and like looking outside the window and Dio's like, he doesn't have a seatbelt or a booster. And I was like, I like wanted to like flag down the mom and be like, come on. No, you know what I mean? Like what you're a kid in a, your kid doesn't have a seatbelt. At least do the seatbelt. You know what I mean? And I'm like, oh my God. And then we said something about an accident. I'm like, yeah, like, and she's like, why do we have to wear a seatbelt? And I was like, imagine whatever. And there was an accident. Oh, right. We saw an accident. The car was flipped over. Oh. And Dia was like, I wonder if they're good or if they like were ejected. And like ejection would just happen if, you know, you don't have your seatbelt. And that's why it's important to have your seatbelt and blah, blah, blah. And we talked about like way back when like, you know, Mimea was young, like seatbelts were just kind of, not mandatory or date some cars didn't even have them you know what I mean and how different times are and whatever and uh, she's like like the little kid if he was in an accident and she like remember that little kid like what do you do call the cops like what do you want me to do like I just you know I'm not in that car I'm at a red light and I'm seeing this child and I said I said maybe the mom doesn't even know I mean we've all done it where we leave and our kids are not strapped in so true so true and we you were right so I'm like maybe this is her moment We've all like, had that moment. Oh my gosh. Where you go to like, was it, was it me? I don't even car seat When the car seat is not attached to the car. Know what I mean? I don't know if it was me, but like, and I stopped and his little seat went. That, that was you. I remember. Yeah. And it's when you turn and the car seat just like <laughs> lips. And like, when it's your first one, you're like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. You think you're the worst parent ever though? No? Oh, fuck tell anyone but the when it's like your second third you're like yeah oh yeah he'll be fine stop by the side of the road the anxiety is just not as high right you don't feel as bad you know it's gonna be okay oh my god okay let's go back to wow okay. regain okay okay so regain and it's a conversation i actually had the other day with someone who 
was feeling like a lot of like guilt and shame over mm-hmm. it. And I, it was like, she needed to like, I was like, Hey, first of all, I didn't notice any bit of what you regained. Not that it's about me, but just, I think people need that reminder that like to stop worrying about what other people are thinking and see. especially for regain. So maybe that person, you didn't see it. And for others, it's very obvious. Yeah. Like, regained 50 pounds. Yes. Exactly. Sure. sure. We see it. Yes. But who that that's not an approach that's going to fix how you feel. You know what I mean? So in my mind, I'm like, okay. Like it's if, almost like, it's also like, who cares? It, how do, oh, that, I feel it, that same way. Yeah. Like it doesn't matter if you have regained weight and other people have noticed. Yeah. Yeah. I think that like, and again, that if you, and, and you feeling that guilt and that shame, and then people are noticing, look at the energy that you are putting into this, like, it's very negative. I mean, it doesn't really give you, it adds zero value to you and getting what you want. And what is it that you want? And I was also having a conversation with someone that I gained uh, some weight and I, she kept bringing that up. And I said, let's stop like talking about where you were and like, just, this is where you are. This is where you are right now. This is who you are right now. This is what you weigh right now. This is how you feel right now. Honestly, that's all that matters. I do believe that holding on one of the most damaging parts of regain is holding on to the regain, holding, like basically identifying as someone that has regained weight is fucking exhausting. Exhausting. So do not identify as someone that has regained. And I would even say the same thing for weight loss. After a while, I know you want to be proud and you want like a parade for you to have lost 50 pounds. I understand. But at one point, it is time for you to stop identifying as the girl that lost 50 pounds. Do you hear what I'm saying? That's not your own. That's not you, you know, like you are a whole person. And when you make one thing your identity, that's dangerous. One million percent. Like yeah. for any, and not a just weight loss. Like it's like, oh, I'm the vegan girl or I'm the this yeah. or I'm the that. Yeah. And like we lean in so hard maybe to that one thing, but you're, it's more holistic than that. Yes. Yes. And give yourself a chance to change your mind. And, and if you have that, that focus or that energy towards your weight loss, and it's not about the 50 pounds or the whatever, um, and, oh, I've lost a lot of weight and you always have to announce it and you always have to make it a part of like who you are. Right. Um, that's when there's more shame and guilt when you lose it, when you lose that success, you know what I mean? Um, so I would, I mean, it's something to work on because we're so used to that. You know, when we lose weight, we're so used to identifying as, and after a while, you guys, no one cares and no one remembers. Like, do I yeah. identify as someone that has lost 70 pounds? I even forgot sometimes. Yeah. yeah. You know, like, it's like, I forget that that's where I was or that's whatever. And it's like, oh, I used to live in a bigger body. Sometimes yeah. to explain why I do what I do, yeah. but it's like, that's it though. So I don't identify always as someone that's lost weight. I just want to live. I just want to be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But if you guys are, you know, if you've experienced any amount of weight gain, we just kind of wanted to give you a little, a little bit of a pep talk today. Yeah. Honestly. Yeah. And to stop, like also weight gain isn't bad. Like I need to say that like weight gain does not mean bad. You were not bad. You have not failed. Like you can choose a different lifestyle that adds fat on your body. Yeah. And it's that, that, like, that's it. Like that. Yeah. And it's okay. Yeah, that's literally what like what happened to me. And I think that like, that's why if you take weight gain as no matter what it is, it's bad. Um, that's not okay, because that's not true, right? So weight gain doesn't have to be bad. Sometimes weight gain is a sense of freedom for some. And sometimes weight loss is a sense of freedom for some like, you know, I finally prioritized the life that I wanted, I've lost weight. Oh, finally prioritized the life I wanted, I gained weight. So see how it's not it's not a result that represents anything, honestly, other than what it is to you. And I think that that's what you need to connect to right now. So if you've regained weight, you need to know why that happened. And I think that for some, it's like, I, and it's not like, oh, I really let myself go. I don't like that. You didn't let yourself go. What you did though, is maybe you've disconnected to your relationship with yourself and you're not a priority. You've not prioritized what you want in a very long time, or you've pushed aside Often weight gain, especially massive, like a lot of weight gain, um, you know, a lot of weight put on our bodies is 
an accumulation of ignoring the fact that that's happening, not talking about it, which means not staying connected to what's happening. And sometimes people want the secret, like, how did you lose the weight and not gain it back? Sometimes people think like, oh, they just like didn't like to eat as much as I like to eat, or it's not as hard for them. That's bullshit. You're trying to convince yourself that I'm special and you're not basically. That's not it. All I did was stayed connected to what was happening and then made choices. I didn't ignore, you know, I didn't ignore. And then it's like, do I want this? What kind of life am I creating? That's the secret. You know, there is no meal plan that brings you, there's no way that brings you consistent forever weight loss. It's, it's, it's a way to think. It's literally that. Like, I wish we could tell everyone yeah. that you just need to stay connected. And sometimes what happens is we end up doing things, actions, behaviors that are not authentic, that we're just starting to chase weight loss. But if you stay connect connected and you're honest with yourself, you'll catch those eventually. And you'll, you'll change your behavior and you won't let it, you won't do this. And then, you know, gain a bunch of weight. Yeah. Like, I can almost guarantee that anyone that's gained a bunch of weight would say out loud, I really disconnected, right? You either disconnected to content that was once helping you. You either disconnected to the people that kept it up and you did it. You yeah. disconnected to yourself. You put that on the back burner. Like, and, and it's deeper than just like disconnected. Now I need to have a conversation. See, way deeper than that. Sometimes it's like, well, I did this and then I went on vacation. It's like, I couldn't get back. Oh, well, then you have trouble adjusting. Like it's, it's. C'est vraiment plus complexe d'aller chercher, là. like, what happened and what am I missing? But at the end of the day, what is missing is not a different meal plan. It's not whatever. It's you, you did not have the proper thought process to move past whatever you were going through. And you chose this path. And often it's convincing. It's a convincing piece. Like, I'll come again or I'll try again later or whatever. Um and it's not at the best interest of your relationship with yourself. Our brains are trained to make the comfortable choice. Like that's so the comfortable for the moment, for the this moment. moment. That's what our brains want for us. Yeah. Okay? The most comfortable, easiest decision in the moment. And so thinking about your choices, your action, your weight gain, that's not comfortable. Let's be honest. That's yeah. not comfortable. No, you're right. It, it's not. And you know, I love the language that we're using because we're saying we're connecting weight gain with disconnecting. Okay. But so many other people would say fallen off the wagon. I just, I, or I do not connect with that language. You're not off the wagon guys. It didn't like, you're not off and on you disconnected. Yeah. And I think that like, that's the minute you speak that way, that's very diet culture. That's very the way that we used to speak, you know, in 2002. Um, and it's not 2002. And, the, and there's damage behind saying off and on the wagon because you think that's a thing. It's like all or nothing. I'm like, I don't really connect with all or nothing. I don't think that's a thing. I think we make choices every day. And, you know, it's it's almost a way that we've all society have like kind of connected together. Like, are you an all or nothing? And also like that is an identity that you've like given yourself because pretty sure when you came out of your mom's womb, it's not like Jose, not all or nothing. You know, Joanne, all or nothing. Like that's something that you practiced or like has literally convinced yourself that that's a thing and that's who you are like that's not how you were born that you can't you know be consistent it's your perspective of you that's I what mean, I think it's I think it's like anything I think it's nature and nurture I just yeah. grew up in a household where there was all or nothing behavior yeah. you absolutely could be a part of that and I think some people are literally just genetically more inclined to be like that yeah. but that doesn't mean that you can't make progress or make change and creating awareness around that is just so important yes and like create change for yourself and realize okay I've like created this way to be that I have opportunities to not be this way like that. And, and it's not like all the time, or it's just got one day at a time. Like, why is it like we, you know, at the beginning of this um, podcast, we said people are worried about something that didn't happen. And we hear that all the time about weight loss. Like, what if I lose the weight and don't keep it off? I'm like, how about we just start with today? Like, 
I'm so, and I, and I said this to my friends as well. I'm like, and I, and I, and I said to her, I know that you are probably thinking you have a goal. So anyone that's listening right now, you're probably like regained weight, need to relose that 50 pounds. Listen, you don't need to know where you're going. Stop connecting to where you were, right? I want you to, instead of connecting to where you were and who you were, start connecting to who you are, what you do right now, who cares how you were behaving 10 years ago? Like we even have people that are like, when I was in university, I was an athlete. I'm like, now you're 47 mom of three. Like you are not an athlete anymore. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Who cares who you were and also yeah. who cares how much you used to weigh guys. Yes. Let that go. And it's so freeing. Like that's how you can be more present. That's how you can practice mindfulness. Mindfulness is not thinking about who you were in university, okay? Or last year. I don't even care what you weighed last week. Sometimes I'm like, I don't care about last week. Like, what about today? Because I'm like, you can't go back. Like, I just want people to just know that they have access to full potential every day. Like, full access to what they want every day. And living in the past often brings uh, a comparison piece that is not positive. Like, honestly, if you want to use the past as a positive way back, good then we're not talking to you. But most of the time, if when it comes to weight loss and especially regain, uh, when we're living in the past, c'est pas bon. So I told her, you don't need to know where you're going. All you need to know is that today, you don't feel right. This doesn't feel right. And so you're going to connect to that. That's it. That's all you need today. That's all you have access to. Yeah. That, yes. Like guys, if you are listening and you're someone that's regained your weight, please, I beg of you, stop thinking about how much you used to weigh, how much you want to lose. Acknowledge that you do not feel good in your skin right now. If that's you, some people regain and that's not you. Amazing. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. This doesn't apply amazing. to you. We're, we're talking to people who have regained some weight or gained weight in general yeah. in their life and don't feel comfortable. They are ready for a change. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I, and I, you know, I said, and I said this to Leash, I'm like, so this conversation, let's say you're listening to this and you're like, oh, this made me feel good. Okay. I feel this way. Oh yeah. I feel the motivation, right? I have the desire to change whatever. Okay. You know, you guys, how you have that. And then it just disappears like in three minutes, you know, that's what we mean by you need access to conversations like this more often. Yes. If you only have these types of conversations in your life, literally once a month, that is not enough for you to shift your mindset, change your perspectives, have results. Honestly, this is something, and that's what your weight loss provides this conversation, the conversation that brings motivation, the conversation that allows you to shift your perspective and then make change. That's what we do on a daily basis. So imagine if you had this conversation every single day, how connected you would be to change or to shift, you know? Um, and that's that's the piece that tons of people don't, they're like, okay, I feel good. I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. Yeah, you're good for three days. After that, life happens again, no, you know? Um, and how many people, you know, leave your weight loss, they feel like, okay, I, you know, I lost my weight and then they're back with weight gain because the conversation didn't keep going. Because and, they disconnected, yeah. not because you guys failed. Like, no, yes, no. Take that language away. Like you didn't fail. You disconnected. That's, That's what it. you did. You yeah. did not fail. Yeah. And even think about like any relationship, like you didn't fail. If it didn't work out, you probably just disconnected. You yeah. know what I mean? So it's the same about your relationship with yourself. You didn't fail. You didn't fail yourself. You just disconnected to yourself. That is what weight loss is. Weight yeah. loss, authentic weight loss is a byproduct of your relationship with your health, with your thoughts, with your behaviors, yeah. with what you want. Yeah. With you, yeah. like the person you are, yeah. and you disconnect to that person. You literally have not put that relationship even on the chart for the, like, the past 10 years. For some, I mean, how many women can you guys like are listening and you're like, my relationship with my husband, my boss, my employees, yeah. my kids, my society. Wife. Where's society? Where's you on that list? Yeah. Like, how many women are really prioritizing their relationship with themselves? But we think as a society that if we have good relationships with everything else, we're going to be good. And I guarantee you, your aunt, don't say pas pareil. No. You can be so happy with everything in your life. You could have a husband you're obsessed with. You could have really cool, fun kids. You could have a great home and a great job. But until you're like really good with you in your skin alone, without that, all of that, that's when true happiness and true like freedom is. And that is the relationship with yourself. That was really good. I really enjoyed that talk leash. 
So advice to people who connected to this podcast, what are, what are we leaving? Like advice is you need to have an environment like join would be my first thing. Create a system in your life where you have a conversation about this. Um, I would say every day, honestly, I think just, I, and, and whether it's someone in your life, uh, whether it's us, uh, you deserve this because this is where the magic happens and the consistency and the connection. And then you you heal and you create that for yourself, you know? Um, and even us, we have these conversations every day. Like I still, and it's not like it's positive. It's short. It's not like exhausting. It's I have an environment that promotes me prioritizing me. I have that in my life. If you don't have that in your life, then you're it's not you're not gonna prioritize you who comes to just succeed. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So good. So good. Okay. Have a fantastic day, everyone. We love you. We appreciate you. Keep listening. Okay, bye.